In this video, we're going to take a look at binomial estimation. Now, when you're working with maths in a real life context and real life situations, what you'll often find is the numbers and the functions that you're working with aren't as nice as what you're going to find in an actual exam. So it's often useful to find simple approximations for complicated functions. And what we can see here is that if x is small, then you can sometimes ignore large powers of x. Okay. So what we're going to do in this video is find approximations for something like this. Okay, so we're going to obtain an estimate for 0.98 to the power of 8 using our expansion from part A. Okay, so part A should be pretty straightforward here. We're just going to use some binomial expansion. So if I just quickly recall the formula here, I've got a plus b to the power of m, and that is equal to a to the n plus, so it's going to be n choose 1 here, n choose 1. And then I'll times that by a to the n minus 1 times by b to the 1. We keep going here so it would be n choose 2, a to the n minus 2 times by b squared. And you can see how this carries on. Okay, and this will keep going all the way up to b to the power of n. Okay, so what I need to do here is just apply that to my expansion here of 1 minus x over 8. That's oh, sorry, x over 5 to the power of 8. So we nearly got there. Try again. So x over 5 to the power of 8. Okay. So applying my expansion here, I'm going to get 1 to the power of 8. So 1 to the power of 8. Then I'm going to do 8 choose 1. So it's going to be 8 choose 1 here times by a to the n minus 1. So that would be 1 to the power of 7. Now times by b to the minus 1. So my b here is minus x over 5. Okay, so that's just going to be times by minus x over 5. Now we're going here to the term in x cubed. I'm going to have to do this two more times here. So I'm going to get 8 choose 2. So 8 choose 2. And then times that by 1 to the power of 6. Like you can see, this power reduces each time. This one increases each time. So that's going to be 1 to the power of 6 times by minus x over 5 all squared. And then finally, one more time here, I'm going to get 8 choose 3. 8 choose 3, I'm going to times it by 1 to the power of 5, and then finally minus x over 5, all cubed. Okay, so all I need to do now, here now is just simplify it as I go. So 1 to the power of 8, that would just be 1. So I can't do anything with that, so that'll just be 1. I've got 8 choose 1 here, so that would be 8 times by 1 to 7, that'll be 8 still. And times it by minus x over 5. So I'm going to get minus 8x there over 5. Okay. I've then got 8 choose 2 here. So again, just use your calculator here. We don't need to do this by hand. Um, so I'm going to get 28 there. Times it by 1 to the 6. That's just going to give me 28 again. And I've got minus x squared over 5 here. So that's now going to become positive. So I'm going to get plus 28x squared over 25. Okay. 5 squared is 25. And then finally here, we've got 8 choose 3. So again, just use your calculator. This will give me 56. I get 56 there, times by 1 to the 5. So I'm going to get 56 still. And that times up by minus x over 5 all cubed. So what I'm going to get here is minus 56 x cubed. And then 5 cubed here is 125. So this will be over 125. Okay. Now clearly this expansion will carry on. I'm not bothered about going up to the 8th term here, or x to the power of 8. So we'll just stay there. Okay, we only need the term in x cubed. So that gives us our solution there to um, part A to get us started. So for part B then, it says using a suitable substitution for x and your expansion from part A, obtain an estimate for 0.98 to the power of 8, giving your estimate to three decimal places. So how do we do this here? Well, there's two parts to this. I've got my expansion from part A, and then we want to find an estimate for this here in part B. So what I'm going to consider here is ignoring the powers for now. What must that value of x be? So that 1 minus x over 5 is equal to this base here of 0 0.98. So what I'm doing here is I'm just equating both of the bases here. So 1 minus x over 5 is equal to 0 0.98. And what I want to do here now is just find that value of x. So I just need to solve here, make x the subject. So I can add x over 5 to both sides, and I can subtract 0.98 off both sides here. 
So in that case, what I'm going to get then is x over 5 is equal to 0.02 here. Okay, just subtracting 0.98 off both sides. And in that case, anyway, I just want x here. I just need to times both sides by 5. So x is equal to 0.02 times by 5, giving me 0.1 there. Okay. So in this case here, my substitution for x will be 0.1. Okay, and this is important. So sometimes you will be asked to make that clear, what your substitution is. Do make that clear and say something like, using the substitution here of x equals 0.1. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is take this value of x and substitute that into my expansion here in part a. Okay, and we're going to see what we get here now. So using x equals 0.1. So 0.1 and expansion from part A. So and part A here. Then, like I said, I'm just going to substitute that into my expansion here. So what we're going to get then, on 0.98 to the power of 8, it's going to be approximately 1 minus 8 lots of 0.1 over 5. So that's going to be over 5. I then add 28 lots of 0.1 squared, divide that by 25. So of course, 28 lots of 0.1 squared divide by 25. And then finally, hopefully we've got enough room here. I do, oops, that should be a minus. So minus here, 56 lots of 0.1 cubed. And I just divide that by 125, okay? So what I need to do here now is evaluate this right hand side here on my calculator, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is just put this into my calculator and show what you should get for each part as we go. So obviously we can't do anything with the one. So 0.98 here, power of eight is approximately one. So then putting this eight times 0.1 over five into your calculator, you should get minus 0.16. So minus 0.16. Putting this part here into your calculator, you should get 0.0112 plus 0.0112 plus 0 0.0112. And then finally, here for this last part, we should get minus 0.0048. Okay, so 448 there. And again, just put this in one more time here into your calculator and just simplify this. It would give me 0.850. 752. Okay, but we want to give our estimate here to three decimal places. In that case, this will be approximately 0 0.851 there. Okay, so 0 0.851. Okay, and that's two three decimal places. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our estimate there. And what I would recommend here, just to give your answer a bit of a um, sense check here, is put 0 0.98 to the power of 8 in your calculator. Okay, so if I quickly do that, so 0 0.98 to the power of 8. What I get here, if I do this at the top, and I'll do it in a different pen color, just so I don't confuse anyone. So 0 0.98 to the power of 8. In my calculator here, it gives me 0 0.8507. 630 or 630-226, okay? So what we can see then is our estimate here isn't actually too bad. If I get 0.850752, and it's pretty close um, to that certain degree of accuracy there, which if I round it to three decimal places, again, we get the exact same thing there as well, okay? So obviously if you put that into your calculator and you get something completely different, then obviously you need to go and check um, your original uh, estimation here and what you've substituted in. Something's probably just gone wrong there. But there we have it. So that's our solution to that question. And that brings us to the end of this video on binomial estimation. In the next video, we're going to take a look at exam revision for the binomial expansion.